Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the Biome Monster Mash mini series. So for the last video we made, we created the Apex Predator for my jungle alien planet biome, and today we're going to be creating the primary prey of this predator. So you guys left a lot of really cool comments about like the predator and prey. I know for the predator, I think we're gonna go with their water-based hunters. They might hunt like some things that are on land, but I I could see them primarily hunting fish and then larger water life, probably along rivers, kind of like in the Amazon, there's like the larger rivers that are there. And I could see those big cats hunting things that live in those rivers. And then for the prey, for their primary prey, you guys had a lot of really fun comments, but I did really lock on to these two comments that I'll pop up right here. Basically three of the creatures from these comments I really liked, and I think they'd be really cool to have integrated into this prey. At first, my first gut instinct for this one was doing like a hoof based prey. I always go towards like boars or deer or like something like that whenever I think of prey creatures. Like when I think lion, I think like zebras and antelope and things like that. But I'm like, I wanted to try something different. And so I was thinking, what if their primary prey could also be kind of like a predator? And so my thought process was these three creatures. So first off, we have the softshell turtle. I think this is a really interesting creature to use with like maybe their claws that the the, pre the predator had, they could like rip off like the shell or like try to bury into it a little bit more. Or these things since they're turtle based could also reside in the mud at the bottom of like the river. There's a comment that the predator had claws that looked like it could dig. So this, the predator could basically dig this thing out of the mud, but I loved the idea of the soft shell turtle. And then next up would be a caiman, which I think are really cool, like little ferocious things. And this could also be something that would eat other things that are in the uh, water. Like I could see it feasting on other fish or maybe smaller like turtle-like things. I could totally see that just with its like chompers and eating that. And then finally, I really like the mudfish. I think they're really interesting in terms of like their texture, their look. And then I love the idea of its fins being something that I can prop itself up with. Like I know the turtle already does that, but if you see other cool poses that the mudfish takes, I think those would be really cool to apply to this creature as well. So with those three creatures in mind, um, I took a trip to California and I did the rough sketch of this. So let me show you what I did when I was kind of planning this out. Okay, so now from here with this rough sketch that I did on my iPad on the way to California, I'm really liking how this is looking. It's like not the conventional prey that I would think of because it's still a predator, but I could see this, maybe it hangs out by the riverbanks or down at the bottom of the rivers and the predators go in and like ambush it. I could see these being very solitary creatures, which probably would be the advantage for the predator against these. Like, yes, it does have the caiman mouth, but I don't see it being able to do like as much damage as like a crocodile or an alligator would be able to do. For example, you see those videos of the crocodile coming out of the water and like chomping in a zebra. I think these ones more use their chompers to get fish or other small turtles or small sea life that are in the river, but they don't really use it to hunt larger prey that's maybe on land or in the water as well. So I'm really liking how this is going. What I'm gonna do is we're going to now redraw it to be that profile way that we had the predators as well so we can make that profile shot of them all together. And I'm gonna do a couple of extra sketches to show some different characteristics and things about them that could be potentially helpful for like a concept artist giving it to like a 3D model or something. Like I said in the previous video, I'm doing these all for portfolio updates. So I'm trying to make the pieces look good for a portfolio. So let's jump in and get those other drawings started. 
All right, guys, let's jump into the final render of this creature. So first off, I grabbed our predator to do as reference, basically, so I can see the size comparison. Um, when I was planning this, I wanted to make sure that the line art was a similar width and basically everything looked like it was meant to be together. I've had problems in the past where I've done completely like separate drawings and like separate canvas sizes. So once you like bring all the creatures together after doing that, they have like different line widths, their coloring style might be a little different if you did something a little bit different for the shadows, like lots of things can go wrong if you don't have the other one to compare to. So in this drawing, you'll see me flash to the predator here and there. So just as a heads up, so you know. So after I got the size figured out and sketched out, it was time to jump in and start the line art and getting this guy rendered out. And I really had a lot of fun rendering this. Um, I love bigger reptile-like creatures, but it was also fun to add that turtle aspect just because it gave it really cool baggy folds and really interesting different like, I guess textures to it. Um, it wasn't just kind of like a solid, unit. <laughs> totally know where I'm going with this voiceover, but it was like, it, I really liked having that personality of the folds and not having it be as like plated, I guess you could say, um, without, you know, bigger chunks of, uh, scales or I, I guess I, what I'm saying is like, I liked the texture combination of the smooth skin of the turtle with the addition of some of the plating from its shell and its uh, different scales that I put around. There we go. We, we got there. We got there. But once I got this laid out and figured out, it was time to block in the colors. And I had a lot of fun just experimenting with these browns and yellows because the iPad sketch I did on the road, uh, I was primarily looking at the Cayman coloring, which was really cool. It has like that really nice lightish brown with the greens and the yellows. Um, and then the soft shell turtle, I really liked the darker color of its shell. So I was like, oh, we could bring that and put it along the spines or on the plating on the back of its neck. Uh, and then also reflect it into more of that mudfish uh, fin that I put on the back, like a crest on the back of its head and along its tail. And then adding that little bit of yellow on top just gave it a nice little pop of color for those fins. And later on, I do a sketch where I'll show you guys. I was thinking it would be really cool if that would help it maybe blend in a little bit with nearby foliage or fronds. Um, one of the things I did realize was, like I said, in a sketch in a little bit, that uh, I don't think cattails and certain foliage that I drew are very common in more of like the Amazon rivers. I could be totally wrong because I'm not very familiar with foliage or or like plant life and where they exactly reside. But I have a feeling I mixed up the location on that one, but I still think it was just a nice little ad like addition to show it next to like some cool fronds and foliage. So I did a couple of the concept sketches as well. I'll talk about them in a little bit here in the video, but uh, I, in my portfolio, I was told to show some really cool, diverse action poses for it or maybe different drawings to inform other concept artists or to inform other people within the team, like a modeler, or if someone was programming an action for this creature to do, uh, like let's say like with Monster Hunter, it would show the fighting that it would do or maybe a certain movement that it would make. I really wanted to show that within my sketches here. And it was fun doing like that really intense like pose of it chasing that fish and having that a uh, really cool line of movement. And then I had fun just kind of showing it floating amongst some reeds and grass and uh, showing what would be kind of peeking above the water as it was stalking its prey in the rivers. Okay, so we are all done with this creature and I really like how the concept turned out overall. It's very different from what I initially would have picked for a prey creature. Like I said, I was gravitating towards like a boar or like a deer or some type of like hooved creature. And this is 
very much different than what I had initially thought of. And I thank you guys for all of your comments on the previous video, because that really helped inform where this was gonna go. So at least for the side profile version of this guy, I, I think it does look good, but I really struggled with the fins and like how it's sitting on this rough sketch. I really like it like splayed out and like resting on top of him for this sketch, but it was a little hard to figure out how to convey that on a profile view. So once we get this laid out with all of the creatures together, maybe I'll tweak the fins a little bit, kind of mess with it a little bit more from there. And then at least for the rough sketches, I wanted to show what it would look like while it's swimming in the water. You would probably see like the top of its face and then with the snout of the uh, soft shell turtle, it kind of can have its breathing apparatus above the water as well. And then I was thinking that the fins on the back of its head could kind of match the coloring of the fronds and other things that are near the edge of the water. I think that would work really well for helping it maybe camouflage a little bit. So you'd probably only see a little bit of the top of the tail, the top the head just a bit and a little bit of the top of the shell when it's like swimming in the water. And then when it's diving and going after fish, I could see this thing being pretty fast, uh, both using its tail as a primary propeller source and with these larger fins, it could probably gather up a lot of water and then do a really hard push out. Like mudfish are really fast in terms of like, if you watch them like move in the mud or just like battle each other, they're like really intense. And that's kind of where I got the idea for like this thing just being able to propel out and into the water to catch fish. But anyway, that is the second creature in our set of four for my portfolio overhaul. I do like how this turned out and it's not like what I was thinking typically for a prey creature. So I'm glad that I kind of pushed it in a direction that wasn't what I was thinking initially, but I really like this. I think still my favorite though is this rough sketch that I did on the iPad out of all these drawings. I love this little one. It just has a lot of movement and emotion and oh, I just love it. But either way, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you have any ideas, we have um, the two scavengers left. So if you have ideas for animals, that I could use to mash together to make those two scavengers, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys are thinking. But anyway, thank you guys again so much for stopping by and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all those YouTuber things that I say, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.